So um, we're going to move on to the next presentation, which is um, Borna Zuber. And Borna, um, we're really looking forward to um, seeing your presentation. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome, and thank you for being here. Um, so my name is Borna Zuber, and in my case study, I didn't choose one product specifically. I try to look at it a little bit from afar um, to kind of make it approachable for um, all sorts of investments, business, and um, different people who choose to uh, join this ecosystem for various reasons. Um, so I kind of um, looked at it first from the problems that we need to solve. And of course, it's um, storing the data, recording the data, um, providing the data to government agencies that want to check on the um, if, if everything is in, in alignment. And of course, blockchain is a brilliant solution for that and allows us to uh, kind of modify all of the processes that are going on there. And the first thing that I asked myself uh, what will be a, a good project to um, kind of be the basis for it. And I stumbled upon the Hyperledger, um, which is a open a project from the Linux Foundation and has a lot of uh, people working on it continuously. Uh, their uh, blockchain fabric is uh, easily customizable and I suggest that as being the underlying uh, layer for um, my idea which I'm going to propose now which is basically not creating a single um, blockchain but um, what um, looking forward to where all blockchains kind of end up at one point, which is the idea of scaling. And if we imagine the origin chain network as a global system for uh, agriculture, which can be interoperable, uh, which is one of the biggest um, obstacles in the whole process, um, but it has to be interoperable with, uh, with a lot of different industries because agriculture is not just one thing, it's a um, nexus of interactions. And uh, that's why we need to um, create a system of blockchains which would kind of help the system scale and um, I envision them as being um, oriented towards um, each part of the agriculture industry and as you can see here on the first slide I kind of imagine that maybe a specific coin or a blockchain could be handled only for um, relevant uh, data for example for cattle or um, vegetables or dairy or um, even machinery. Uh, now I chose um, Hyperledger fabric because it is very customizable and has basically two uh, main components with make, with, which makes it very attractive. Uh, first one is that it allows for on-chain and off-chain data to be um, stored. Um, I think that off-chain data should be used uh, for the reporting side and the recording of, example, um, you buy 50 cows and you um, place them on your farm, you can make a picture of those cows and send them onto the off-chain data, store them, and it can be later proved if you have all the um, cows there and it's a visual representation, but uh, pictures and large reports like that take up a lot of data. So they're not good and not mm -hmm. very compatible on-chain. Um, so I would uh, leave the on-chain side for the transactions and storing smaller uh, chunks of data to make it uh, easier and more uh, nimble to use. Um, so from these examples here, you can use that um, a variety of blockchains will be implemented. Of course, they would all have to communicate with each other together and with different um, stakeholders in this whole ecosystem uh, that would, in my opinion, incentivize people who are, let's say, if you are lactose intolerant, you would never use a dairy coin because you would never buy dairy products. On the other hand, if you're vegan or vegetarian, you may choose to buy more and use more of the uh, let's say vegetable coins because it incentivizes your daily usage um, and for example the machinery coin could be easily implemented into government funds or investments into machinery or renewing uh, old machinery that's maybe broken or outdated and has to be replaced so let's say if government wants to um, incentivize new tractors being implemented for farmers, they could issue a million tractor coins and uh, send them to the wallets of the uh, farmers that apply for uh, the stimulus. So it opens also a, a new level of um, investment opportunities, which is, of course, very interesting for uh, businesses, private investors and large investors that want to maybe target the industry specifically. Um, let's say you believe in uh, the previous project that we heard about uh, hemp and you want to invest into that industry, you can support that by investing into a hemp coin and hemp blockchain built on the origin chain network and that way um, direct your money into entrepreneurs 
who are building out the ecosystem in, in that direction. Um, what I also believe needs to be a huge factor in building this out is the gamification element, as you see on the second slide here. Um, the farmers of the past are not the farmers of the future. Kids that are growing up today, they're living with technology already and they're using it far better than we are. So uh, when they grow up and they become farmers, they will have this in their little finger and it will be a lot more intuitive for them. And they will have already through games and apps be used to having a high level of reward systems, levels, achievements, progress bars, all of the things that we kind of look as silly in as, as you know, like childish. Uh, I think it will be a part of the next generation implemented already. So we should uh, look to have a element of social networks, which um, increase the networking effect and kind of trigger the domino effect, for instance, if there are a lot of chicken lovers out there, they might post about it on um, the origin chain social uh, part of the network and share pictures and exchange ideas. And they, they see, let's say, a farm that they really like of a farmer, they can invest into the coin that's supporting the farmer that's using the coin in their interest. Um, so yeah, I have a, a lot of the ideas here in the gamification aspect, and I'm, I'm very open to um, questions and other ideas because I think that's uh, one of the things that will help this scale and make it more usable to create a greener and better world for everyone. Thanks a million, Borna. Um, fantastic presentation. Um, I'm a big fan of tokenizing behavior change. Um, particularly with blockchain and um, sustainable interventions. Um, and I suppose my, my only question is briefly is, what was your level of blockchain knowledge before this and um, how has it advanced with this project? Mm -hmm. um, so a few years ago, it was only from afar, a little bit of investing and just looking through, you know, the social media, what people were talking about it. Uh, but as I started studying this, um, I kind of looked more into you know, like on-chain and off-chain data become more relevant as an idea. Prior to that, it, it, it wasn't. Um, and then I really saw how big of a role uh, programming and development has in this whole um, uh, ecosystem uh, to develop something properly. Uh, a lot of developers have to really invest a lot of time to create a system that's really based on code, right? Because uh, in, in the idea phase of creating a token, it's actually very easy, but making it operable with, let's say, a supermarkets chain of reporting that requires really technical data. Um, so uh, I'm not that technical myself, but I think that's a huge component in that. And, and it, it just made me realize how, how important that is. And I think we have to invest into programmers, developers, and the whole IT structure behind it. Thank you, Borna. And I'm going to open it to our panelists. If a panelist would like to answer you, uh, ask you a question. Can I just get in there, Trevor? Sorry, I had, had raised my hand. Uh, is it okay to go? Fire ahead, Paul. Yeah. Hi, Borna. Uh, an excellent presentation, actually, and uh, some fantastic ideas and quite broad. Um, but I suppose the whole sustainability thing that's coming, obviously, coming quick and fast towards us all now, it, it obviously requires us as individuals as well to take responsibility uh, in terms of actually how we can, I suppose, can play our own parts in it. But how do you see in terms of when you talk about all the, you know, in terms of tokenizing, as, as Trevor alluded to, how, who do you see as responsibility, I suppose, from if you look at the farming side of things, is it more the farmers in, in terms of the, the agri sector itself to kind of drive activity through the blockchain or is it actually through consumers in terms of actually getting on board with various kind of opportunities that, um, you know, that would come down the line? Mm -hmm. um, hello Paul and thank you for the question. Um, I think that depends uh, a lot on the individual person. So if you're a farmer that really wants to use social media to kind of um, promote your um, honey, which is organic and um, sustainable and you want to integrate it into the blockchain, you would have to take it upon yourself. Um, community would take part into it as we already see that network effects uh, really drive a lot of um, good to business. And of course, the marketing element is already there. Um, from the infrastructure side, I think um, at the start, it would have to be um, either larger investors, banks from the government, um, something like issuing equipment or helping with the initial investments. Um, and definitely the education side will be um, a, a big part in all of this. So um, as I said, the kids from tomorrow will understand this intuitively. They will they won't need the education, but if we want to bring on um, 
a lot of people who will have to educate um, workers, uh, business owners, um, get investors interested, making it cool and trendy for the younger generations. So we'll, I think we'll, we'll have to implement um, basically all of that. So you think, sorry, just to go back, you think it's kind of very much the next generation will take more responsibility to drive this forward? Um, I think they will have it easier. Um, I okay. think now if you issue um, a million euro of tractor coins, uh, I think that a lot of um, already established old generations would be interested in something like that. And uh, because it, you would incentivize them to buy a new tractor, right? And that would automatically make their business easier, more affordable, they will get more product and um, yeah, I, I think it's a mix. It has to be a mix. Thank you. Thanks a million for that question, Paul. And if I could get the next panelist to ask a question, if you have one. Trevor, can I come in there? Um, uh, Borna, uh, great uh, presentation. Um, I love your enthusiasm and uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's great to hear. Um, uh, I, I'm interested in in the role of gamification as well in in um, in changing people's behavior, and um, we looked a little bit to this in lectures. Um, but um, how do you see uh, it, it? Links with Paul's question before. How do you see the role of governments? Because a lot of the behavioral change uh, that we see at the moment is driven through, from public policy. Um, how do you see the role of governments in this context? Yes, a great question, Amaya. Thank you for that. Uh, that's actually the first um, point from which I uh, started when I um, asked myself um, how should we approach this and basically what should the government do to incentivize someone to use the blockchain and, and incentivize their behavior. Um, I'm going to stick to machinery and tractor coins here just uh, for a second longer. Um, let's say as a business owner and a farmer, you're re uh, required to report to the government how much of yield you have from your farm, your cattle, how much you sold. Um, it directly ties into how you're reporting um, for your taxes and everything kind of um, leads to this business oriented idea where you kind of have to be transparent about your data towards the government. Um, but if you do it steadily and regularly, basically nothing happens and we kind of take it for granted. But let's say the government wants to incentivize really good behavior and a continuity, transparency and everything, they could do something like a progress bar for each business where they say, all right, every 100 um, well-made reports where you um, filed all your data, all information, pictures, um, file for taxes, everything, you get your progress bar to fill up. When you filled 100, you get maybe, I don't know, 10 tractor coins, which you can then invest to buy new machinery. That's just one of the examples that uh, comes to mind there. Um, but I think we have to play with it um, a lot and um, kind of think, think more about it. This is just one example. And uh, that's kind of the direction uh, of where I'm thinking of. Thank you, um, Maya, for that question. Um, very interesting presentation, Born, and thank you very much. And I just dropped a link there into the chat box from page of The Economist. Uh, get ready for the Fed coin and the e-euro. So um, you could be onto something there, uh, Borna. Thanks a million for that.